All right, everybody, we are still at Iowa today. We're gonna finish things up with just a little bit of discussion with Travis. Again, we mentioned earlier, third generation. Uh, my business is still first generation, but ideally we'll get to third generation someday, but you never know how that kind of plays out. What do we, or what would I, or what would shops like ours need to be looking for or interested in or aware of as far as industry trends? And maybe we can start with specifically in the tooling industry. And we hit on a few things today, but what do we want to, what are we not seeing? What should we be looking out for? What, what's coming at us? Kind of where's the industry going? Sure, so automation is the topic. You know, everyone wants robots. They want, they want automation. So how can we help with that process? So robots are getting easier, programming is getting easier. If you're not doing that type of automation, you should. But then think about what can we automate as far as the tooling process goes. Vending machines, great. But even like we were talking earlier, um, ERP integration. Right. So ERP integration is huge. A lot of customers are starting to dive into that, automating the invoicing process. We're doing that on our end. Customers can do that on their end. So don't just take that green piece of paper and think that you have to process and stack every day. We can automate that process. Let us help you pipe the data into your ERP, but think automation. That's really you know where the trends are going. Yeah, I think that that's a big one for us, and we've talked about this offline before, is the, the entire system costs something, right? So we get several deliveries a day, 15, 20, 50 uh, you know, items of tooling, all with pack lists that somebody receives into our ERP system, right? They have to sit there and do a receiving function. Invoices come and it has to be entered into our Correct. system, right? Automating that would save us some money, right? And that, that goes out yep. through the system. The overhead burden, everything. That, that's an interesting thing for us to, to be aware yeah, so of. So you're saving money on both fronts, purchasing it, but also processing that right. package. Right, that back-end cost that you normally don't see. Correct. You mentioned a little bit about robotics. We, we have a robotic as well. Are you seeing that in more shops you guys go into? Yeah, more and more people are going that direction. And it's also getting easier, so I mentioned that, but you see app-based programming. So you don't have to have a specialist to come in and program a whole cell, but you can do your research out there for app-based program robots, and you can find some very simple processes that you can automate. Now, obviously there's, there's more complex situations, more robust systems that you need for harder applications, but for some of your simple processes, you can automate and just make yourself more, more efficient. Automating software side of tooling, robotics. Now, we still hear it, I heard more years ago, but I think it's coming back, but additive manufacturing. Do you see a lot of shops doing additive manufacturing right now? It's coming. Okay. So to Michigan, I would say some of our shops are starting to see it. As a tooling manufacturer, sounds a little concerning, so we're right. gonna have to pivot and say, okay, do we supply the raw material? Do we sell the machines? Um, but as a general I mean, From what overview, I see, everything needs to be post-processed still, right? Still, still everything some needs, machining correct. Involved. And you're limited to size. Okay. So we, the technology isn't there yet, but it is coming. So that needs to be on the horizon for sure. Okay, so what in, what in the tooling system can we automate outside of just getting your tooling, right? What can we do robotics in the shop? If you don't have it, you probably should be looking at it. Yep. Keep an eye out for additive manufacturing. Now, we're a subtractive shop like a lot sure. of people are, so you gotta kinda keep that in the back of your mind. Does it fit in what you do and how you do it? Is this something you need to be aware of as far as the products and the customers you use? Is something to, something to watch? Absolutely. As well as industry diversification. So make sure that you're not just stuck in one industry. So a lot of our customers are starting to explore a lot of aerospace, a lot of space technology. That's starting to come to Michigan. So be aware of the industry trends as far as what industry are you in and make sure you diversify. So that's a fantastic topic that maybe we'll get into on another day because we have purposely decided to be diverse across multiple industries. Correct. But you also have a lot of shops that are specifically medical or specifically aerospace, yep. which you may or may not be more profitable staying in one lane, but you do run the risk of a downturn in that industry impact. Absolutely. So that's that's a really a, a, yeah. a tough decision for a shop owner to make. But something to be aware of. Diversification, Diversification could be a benefit to you if you're not already there. Absolutely. Check it out. Yep. Fantastic topics, fantastic discussion. I really appreciate your time Absolutely. today. We took a ton of time out of you. Oh, sure. we, we love our relationship with Iowan. This, again, this is not a sales pitch for Iowan. If you're in the area, you wanna to talk to them, they'd be happy to talk to you, but you should reach out to your own tooling vendors. See what you're doing, what they can do for you. Are you getting the most out of them? Is it helping you run your shop? What can you do better? 
And, and just, again, leave a comment if you have a question or if you wanna see something else, we'd be happy to address it in a future video. Have a great day. Like and subscribe if you haven't done it already.